Good morning and a very warm welcome to our service of morning prayer for this, the 16th Sunday after Trinity on the 19th of September. Dan is going to be preaching for us this morning and it's wonderful to have all our ordinands back after their summer break. As always, please do be in touch uh, if there's anything we can support you with. Do get in touch with your pastoral leader if you're feeling alone and please do stay safe. Let's take a moment of quiet as we prepare to worship Almighty God. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. We say together, Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore to us the joy of your salvation through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let everything be said and done in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God through Jesus Christ. Sing psalms, hymns and sacred songs. Let us sing to God with thankful hearts. Open our lips, Lord, and we shall praise your name. We say the Venite together. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving and be glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth and the heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it and his hands have moulded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God. We are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. The psalm set for today is Psalm 1. Let's say it together. Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or take the path that sinners tread, or sit in the seat of the scoffers. But their delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law they meditate day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water which yield their fruit in its season and their leaves do not wither. In all that they do, they prosper. But the wicked are not so, but are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous but the way of the wicked will perish. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. Please be seated for our readings and our sermon. The reading comes from James, chapter 3, Two Kinds of Wisdom. Who is wise and understanding among you? Show by your good life 
that your works are done with gentleness, born of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not be boastful and false to the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, devilish. For where there is envy and selfish ambition, there will be disorder and wickedness of every kind. But wisdom from above is pure, peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without trace of partiality or hypocrisy. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. Those conflicts and disputes among you, where do they come from? Do they not come from cravings that are at war within you? You want something and you do not have it, so you commit murder. And you covet something and cannot obtain it, so you engage in disputes and conflicts. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and you do not receive because you ask wrongly in order to spend what you get on pleasure. Submit yourself therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. This is the word of the Lord. Hear the Gospel of our Lord according to Mark. They went on from there and passed through Galilee. And he did not want anyone to know, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is going to be delivered into the hands of men, and they will kill him. And when he is killed, after three days he will rise. But they did not understand the saying, and were afraid to ask him. And they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house he asked them, What were you discussing on the way? But they kept silent, for on the way they had argued with one another about who was the greatest. And he sat down and called the twelve, and he said to them, If any one would be first, he must be last of all and servant of all. And he took a child and put him in the midst of them, and taking him in his arms, he said to them, Whoever receives one such child in my name receives me. And whoever receives me, receives not me, but him who sent me. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Good morning, and we begin our sermon this morning looking at our reading from James that we've just received. And it begs for me that first question, if someone were to audit our life, what would they find? If they were to talk to our best friends and our family, to go through our finances and our household with a fine tooth comb, to talk to our enemies and our nemesi, which I think is the plural of nemesis, I wouldn't know, I've only got the one. But there's a serious question here, isn't there? If they were to go through our lives, these auditors, would they find Jesus? Would they know him from our lives? And James is a letter that has been difficult in the Protestant tradition for some time, particularly around the time of Luther, because of that famous saying, faith alone. And yet James complicates things because he keeps talking about work. But it's unfair to malign James, I think, as opposite to Paul or different. And I want to talk a little bit about why this morning, about why work can be important. 
And when we look at our beginning of our reading there in James 3 verse 13, he kind of pierces us to the core, doesn't he? Can you imagine you're sat in a classroom or at work and someone strides into the room, stands up and says, who is wise and understanding among you? I don't think I could stand up. It's quite a high bar, isn't it? Wise and understanding. But then notice James doesn't ask us to stand up. It is by our conduct that we show our wisdom and our understanding through what we do. And you see, James tells us, look, I'm going to know. If your heart is filled with jealousy or selfish ambition, if those things you do are things you do from pride or jealousy, if you do that thing because you have looked at your neighbour's house and thought, oh, if I work a bit harder, I can have the same car as they've got, or perhaps it would be nice to redo the conservatory the way they have, James tells us that if bitter jealousy and selfish ambition are in our hearts, it's going to show in what we do. You see, he tells us there as we go on in 15, that that wisdom isn't the wisdom of God. That that wisdom comes from the earth. And so when we follow that, when we do those things for our own heart, our own desire, our own jealousy, our own selfish ambition, we create disorder. And how often have we seen that be true? How many of us have read in the papers over the last year or two as the pandemic has ravaged the world? of the super rich, not paying tax or contributing to those who are desperately in need. How many of us have seen selfish ambition and jealousy ensure that the most needy cannot find shelter, that the most desperate cannot have a vaccine in a time of global pandemic. You see, when we act from selfishness and jealousy, we do not find ourselves wealthier and happier. We find disorder and vile practice. And you see, in 17, James explains the power of God's wisdom, the power of a system of works that comes not from looking after ourselves, but from listening to God. You see, the wisdom above is first pure. There is no selfish ambition or jealousy in God's word, in God's wisdom. His deep love for us is why he reveals himself to us. And then look, it's pure and so it's peaceful, peaceable, gentle. His wisdom is not enforced upon others. He is not so desperate to show all that he is right, that he forces us to work for him. He reveals himself to us and is pure, then peaceable, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy and good fruits, impartial and sincere. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. Blessed be the peacemakers. You see, when we follow God's will, God's desire, we cannot help but our works to sing of him because of the outcome of our work. 
Because it is not selfish desire that drives us, because it is not our ambition that means that we go to do these things, but our love for the Lord and our desire to show others how he loves us. We go forth and spread him and not us. And so those who receive that gift become peacemakers. They too become disciples. Not of us who are flawed, full of selfish ambition and jealousy, but of the God whose wisdom is pure and peaceful and gentle. And so there, look, as we move to chapter four, we have that question again directed at us. What causes quarrels and fights among you? Gosh, those two questions. I think perhaps as I prepared this, they've gone through my mind. They've been there when I've woken up in the morning. Who is wise and understanding? What causes quarrels and fights? And you see, he explains there to us in verse two, the same thing that was explained to Moses, to Abraham. The same thing that Jesus told his disciples. Do not covet. Do not desire what your neighbour has and you don't. Love your neighbour. Love your God. You see, because if you covet and you cannot obtain, you fight and quarrel. If you desire and you do not have, you murder. You do what you can to get that which you think is owed to you. Look there in verse four. I think such strong language. You adulterous people do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity to God. Friendship with the world is enmity to God. But that's tough, isn't it? Because we are called to be in the world. We are called to live alongside our brothers and sisters and to love our neighbour. But how can we do that if friendship with the world is enmity to God? Well, doesn't it tell us? Doesn't James go on to say he yearns jealousy over the spirit that he has made to dwell in us. He gives more grace. Therefore, it says God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Submit yourselves to God. And that for me is what's changed my week. Reading that is what has stopped these questions running through my head. Because this isn't up to us. It is not that if we work hard enough, we will find faith. It is not that if we do good deeds, we will somehow work our own way to salvation. It is that Jesus has fought the fight for us and already won. It is that no work we do in the history and future of our lives can in any way measure in the slightest tiny amount to the victory Christ won for us on the cross. But here's the thing, that victory is how much he loves us. And he calls us to love our neighbour and to love him. And he gifts us that love because he made us in his And look, it gets complicated. And so he reminds us, James here, submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Submit, brothers and sisters. Place ourselves at his wisdom. Be humble at his feet. Stand at the foot of the cross and look up and look through it. The reason our works are important is because Christ has won for us. And through our faith, he does the work in our hearts that calls us to show people Jesus. 
And so perhaps our challenge this week, I know the challenge for me, this last one, has been to think back to that question. If someone audits my life, how do they find Jesus? If they look through all that I am, if they talk to my friends and my family, if they speak to my enemies and my nemesis. Will what they find be cross-shaped? And if it is not, what can I do? What one act can I do in my week that means if they knock on my door and say, can I audit your life, they will see Jesus. They will see the shape of the cross in my life. Submit ourselves to God. And then that wonderful reminder in verse 8. We are not left alone in this. We are not asked to do these things to earn something. We are not told we must reach some bar or earn so many points. We draw near to God and he will draw near to us. He is there. He is waiting he has done his work. How do we make a Christ-shaped hole to fit the work he has done? When they audit our lives, how do we show Jesus? Amen. We say the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. And now Astrid will lead us in our prayers of intercession. Intercessions for the 19th of September. Dear Lord, in this week of International Day of Peace, let us pray for peace in our world. We pray for all those who seek peace, reconciliation and fullness of life for all people. Grant them discernment, courage and determination to work for your peace, relying on your spirit and power. When we give each other the sign of peace, let us pray for ourselves that your peace may become more present in us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our world as it tries to find an end to this terrible pandemic. We pray that all who are affected by COVID-19 through illness or isolation or anxiety may find relief and recovery. For those who are guiding our nation and shaping national policies, 
help them make wise decisions. Give skill, sympathy and resilience to all those who are caring for the sick and your wisdom to those searching for a cure. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, whose Son Jesus Christ understood people's fear and pain before they spoke of them, we pray for those who are sick. Surround the frightened with your tenderness. Give strength to those in pain. Hold the weak in your arms of love and give hope and patience to those who are recovering. We offer to you at this time our prayers for all those known personally to us who are suffering. We continue to pray for all those for whom our prayers have been especially requested. Judith Drazen, Julie Gillen, Diane Randall, Viv Robinson, Claire Ross, Eric Bevan, Mavis John, Sally Noble, Albert Page, Rosemary Penketh. We also remember to you all those whose anniversaries of death occur in the forthcoming week. Edith Taylor, Jennifer Quemby, Russell Brockley, Jean Taylor, Lily Salisbury, Harold Bruton. Your love reaches beyond the grave. May those who have gone before us rest in your eternal peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for a blessing on our local community, that our neighbourhoods may be places of trust and friendship where all are known and cared for. This week, we pray particularly for the Westbury Baptist Church and Reverend James Watson and the residents and businesses of Redland Road. We pray for our church ministers, Emma, Mike, Jan, Margaret, Ryan and Dan. We pray for ourselves. Give us fortitude, strength and courage for the week ahead, that we may live our lives following God's commandments and in Jesus' footsteps. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Collect for the 16th Sunday after Trinity. Let us pray. O Lord, we beseech you mercifully to hear the prayers of your people who call upon you and grant that they may both perceive and know what things they ought to do and also may have grace and power faithfully to fulfil them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.